imagine a sea without fish? Have you ever wondered what would happen if we caught too many? Well, a decline in fish populations and a destruction of coral reefs is what results. Here in this video, we will discuss some possible solutions. Marine protected areas, also known as marine reserves, are vital to the restoration of coral reefs and enhancement of fish populations. We look to Dr. Mai Yasu, an interdisciplinary conservation scientist who works as a research associate for UBC Fisheries. Dr. Yasu addresses the differences between community perceptions and biological surveys in and around marine reserves. She conducted this study based on data collected from Danajan Bank in the Philippines in 1998 and 2004. So why was it so important that Yasu looked at local communities when she had biological survey data available? I wanted to do this for two reasons. First of all, the local fishing communities, the people that live in the area, have a much longer time frame from which to assess whether or not these marine reserves are working or not. They have knowledge about the area that, be, that um, from before we actually started doing what we call biological surveys. These are where you're swimming along changes in fish populations. And the second reason is that although conservation biologists often think of marine reserves as being a biological intervention where you take a, you know, you're creating marine reserves, the fish get bigger and they swim out, but it, actually these, these marine reserves are really a social intervention. They only work because you're managing to shape or affect the behavior of people. As Mai had said, marine reserves should really be looked at as a social intervention, especially with regards to how local communities can make or break a marine reserve. They are vital to the success of these reserves. However, we wondered, why was there such a huge discrepancy in how the villagers perceived an exaggerated increase in fish, whereas the biological surveys only mentioned small increases? Maybe these local communities have a generally a very positive perception of these marine reserves, um, not just because the fish populations are increasing, but because of a whole bunch of other reasons. Maybe they are feeling proud of themselves, and if that is the case, then that will likely influence whether local communities think the fish populations are going up. This determines that local perceptions regarding fish abundance are indeed increasing. So that's what we're measuring, is right? yeah. what they think what they are willing to say they think is happening within the marine reserve. If villagers had such an exaggerated perception of the fish abundance compared to the biological data, why would one bother to gather data from both sources? When asked why it was important to still consider the perceptions of the local community, this is what Mai had to say. Oh, uh, you know, the local communities, why are they so biased and they must be a little bit crazy? And probably, you know, those are the kind of things, especially coming from a biologist, that you think, you know, we've measured reality and you just think that these surveys are, you know, capital truth with a capital T. But when you look and you sort of turn the lens on yourself and you realize there are a lot of subjective and also like major limitations on how you collect the biological surveys. And so there are lots of reasons to suspect that the local communities who are there every day might actually have better data than what we have. As Mai has mentioned, there is no right or wrong answer when looking at biological surveys and local community perceptions for methods of data collection. Each method has its own merits and faults. Biologists need to step out of their comfort zone and look at a much more diverse range of data. Hence, my encourages researchers to branch out to local communities to get their input, input in gathering data for marine intervention. Thanks for watching.